8K red code raw footage. How do you work with files that are multiple hundreds of megabytes per second of recording with a complex and proprietary compression algorithm that allows them to retain effectively nearly the full raw quality of the footage while taking up a fraction of the space? Well, LG's monitor team seems to have an interest in this and the many technological challenges faced by creative professionals because they sponsored this video featuring their 49WL95C ultra wide monitor where I'll be figuring out just that. So in the old days when anywhere from 4K to 6K was cutting edge, the solution was this $7,000 Red Rocket X card. But in spite of it using either a custom ASIC or an FPGA, so both highly specialized hardware, even these puppies were easily overwhelmed by the Epic W and the Red Weapon featuring Red's 8K helium sensor. So now this is basically an expensive paperweight. <laughs> that's, a, that's the joys of cutting edge technology, right? Fortunately, NVIDIA has been running around doing demos with their RTX series graphics cards showing GPU accelerated real time full quality 8K playback. So then is this the new way? Now $1,300 is still a lot of money, but it's a lot less than $7,000. Could this be progress? There's only one way to find out. So my first encounter with this monster was back at CES. And while 49 inch ultra wides like this one, so 32 by nine aspect ratio, look at this thing, have existed before, what makes this one special is that the pixel density, since it's effectively 5K by 1440, is much higher than the ones that have existed before, making it actually suitable for creative work. So, it has become apparent that I am going to need to clear some space. So it has become apparent that I'm going to need to clear even more space. Wow, that's a lot of timeline, even with my task manager open here. Um, okay, so first order of business is to fire up a, a plausible project. So this is an episode of Fast as Possible and use the, the normal workstations that we have downstairs. So my CPU is a little better. This is a 7980XE, 18 core processor, and this is a GTX Titan X Pascal. So first things first, uh, we've got ourselves at one quarter resolution. You can see scrubbing around in the timeline, nice and responsive. Playback, basically instantaneous, but whenever I'm not paused, you can see it's quite fuzzy, not representative of the finished product. So let's crank it up to full. So this is 8K and this is working just fine. No problem whatsoever. And in fact, while I'm playing it back, we're sitting at a mere 10 to about 30% CPU usage and our GPU's sitting tight at 25 to 30%. So at first I was kind of confused by all of this. It's been a while since I've looked into 8K performance on the timeline. And I was thinking, well, hold on a second. Is there nothing special about these RTX cards that makes them suitable for this? Why does Nvidia keep talking about this? And then I remembered something. Oh, we shoot most of our projects at a much higher compression ratio than what they would use while shooting a, a VFX heavy Hollywood production, for example. So our data rates are much lower. So let's go get some seven to one footage. So let's start with a sample from Red here. This is a seven to one compression ratio, 8K clip that was recorded at 24 frames per second. So let's go ahead and fire this bad boy up, hit that playback button and Ouch. We are looking at spikes of up to 95% on our GPU and CPU usage that is pinned at 100% while trying to play back that clip. That is a stark contrast 
to the, I think we used 20 to one, is that right, David? Yeah. To the 20 to one footage that we capture. And that's not even the worst of it. Here's some 8K 7 to 1 footage at 30 FPS that we captured. Let's go ahead and drag that onto the timeline. Yeah, woof. <laughs> not, not, not quite. Yeah, he moves like that, sure, why not? So what's weird though, is that even with the heaviest footage that we could throw at our workstation, our GPU is actually neither sitting idle nor completely maxed out. So it's being used to handle the debayering process, which reconstructs the full color image that we see here from the samples that are collected by the image sensor. But our CPU is still in charge of the entropy decoding, which is a process that allows the most common input signals to be substituted for much shorter ones, saving space, and wavelet decoding, which frankly, I'm not familiar enough with to offer even a basic explanation, and the Wikipedia article wasn't much help. Anyway though, so, so maybe our problem here is we just need more CPU horsepower to keep our GPU fed. AMD to the rescue then? Why don't we try going from 18 to 32 processor cores? Building in progress. Oh, shoot. Mission failed. Okay, it worked. Didn't do anything. And interestingly, our GPU usage is higher, near 100%. So this is kind of fascinating. I've said it many times before that every system is effectively bottlenecked because there's something that is slowing down the process or else it would be infinitely fast. But this is like double bottlenecked. It's like they're perfectly matched to each other, but still not enough for the task. This is great too. Look what happens to timeline scrolling when my CPU's at 100% usage. So while I was troubleshooting to prepare for this video, I actually spent some of my time with the RTX 2080 rather than the RTX 2080 Ti. Uh, because what I thought was that this functionality had something to do with their new NVENC engine. But actually it doesn't. In fact, there's nothing about the tensor cores or the ray tracing cores or anything like that, that makes the RTX card so good at this. It's just the sheer friggin' processing power of all those CUDA cores. So we are gonna jump for 8K seven to one footage straight to the RTX 2080 Ti. And you might think to yourself, well, gee Linus, that's a, 1200 to 1300 US dollar graphics card, of course it can handle it, but that's not necessarily to be taken for granted. I mean, we installed CPUs that cost up to $2,000 and they couldn't do it. It's all about having the right tool for the job. Okay, everything's working normally. Here we go. This is the moment. <laughs> I mean, now that it's kind of gotten its act together, that's a lot better. We are now at 100% CPU, 95% GPU, but we are still dropping frames. So that's it then. No CPU on earth can handle this 30 frame per second, 8K, 7 to 1, red code, raw footage, at least not as long as it has to handle the entropy decoding and wavelet decoding. What if we could offload those to the GPU? We are going to need a beta version of RED's decoder that unfortunately isn't supported by Adobe Premiere at this time. Fortunately, it's built into the beta of RED Cine X Pro, and we're gonna start with the 24 FPS footage. Now, it's a little flaky right now, I'm actually not sure if this is going to work, but let's go ahead and give it a shot. So we're gonna enable GPU decode and it's flaking out on me. So it's running at like eight frames per second. Fortunately, the fix right now seems to be to just toggle between image pipelines. And there it is, 
smooth 8K playback. Uh, that hitch, by the way, is the clip restarting, but that's not even the most impressive part. So our CPU is sitting at just 10% utilization, and our GPU is up at 77, 80% utilization. So we potentially have some headroom to spare. So our overall usage for the system is way down, like 10% of our 32 cores. We could be doing this on a, a, a more human workstation, you know, one with six or eight cores by offloading this work to the GPU. Because the thing to remember as well is that when we were pinning both our CPU and GPU at 100%, that was just playback. We weren't even applying any real-time effects like denoising the footage or, or anything like that. We were at the limit. Now we have headroom to play with. Let's go ahead and try our 30 FPS footage though. That's actually working a little bit better than I expected. When I, uh, <laughs> the first time around, I actually had to overclock the GPU a little bit to get this quite so smooth, but you know what? I'm taking it. So there it is. Our GPU CUDA usage jumps up near 90%, but our CPU stays at 10%, and we are smoothly playing back seven to one, 8K red footage at 29.97 frames per second. Really? No. Can we get some applause sound effects in the video or something? I don't know. This is crazy. So all that's left now then is to thank LG for sponsoring this video featuring their 49WL95CW ultra wide monitor. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious why they wanted us to feature this in this video because it's designed for content creators like photographers, filmmakers, music producers, and more who can really benefit from this kind of a canvas. Being able to work on more than one thing simultaneously or just be able to manage and see extremely long timelines without zooming out, giving them a finer degree of control. And it's not even just for creators, but office work would also be a great option. Uh, someone like a programmer, a stock trader, or really anyone who needs a ton of side-by-side -side screen real estate because it's basically exactly the same as having two 2560 by 1440 monitors side by side, except that you have no bezel in between. LG's also been hard at work on software that allows you to take two inputs, so like your desktop and your laptop, and seamlessly share your mouse and keyboard between them, just like moving between them so you can control two systems at once. It's got full support for USB Type-C, including power delivery, so you can use it as a single cable docking solution for your laptop, and it's got support for HDR10 with two 10-watt speakers built in. In fact, it was, I didn't realize they were gonna be that loud. That happened, that happened a couple times during the video. So check it out at the link in the video description, and I guess that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, you guys. If you disliked this video, well, you can hit that button, but if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link below. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join.